Hello, today we're going to take a look at the Mi Photo Globetrotter aluminum tripod and see how it will work for your landscape photography. So we're going to take a look at the Mi Photo Globetrotter aluminum tripod. Um, it's been out for quite some time under the Mi Photo brand. They've been a pretty popular set of tripods, especially geared towards travel and things like that. So I've had this one for a while now, used it quite a bit. It still sees fairly regular use on my landscape photography today. But yeah, let's dive in and take a peek. So the Mi Photo brand's been made at Benro facilities for quite some time, and they still keep some designation of it on their website and things like that. You can still get these tripods around. Officially retails for around 220, the Globetrotter Aluminum, but if you keep an eye out for sales, you will see these uh, on sale for less than that frequently. There are sort of three major models in the Mi Photo line, depending on what your needs are, which get into height, load capacity, and things like that. They've got the Mi Photo Backpacker, they've got the Mi Photo Road Trip, and they've got the Mi Photo Globetrotter. So this is the Globetrotter version, which means it is sort of the largest tripod, gets you the best or the highest load capacity, and gets you the better height. Road Trip falls in the middle with a slightly less load capacity and not quite as much in height. And of course, Backpacker's the smallest. So you sort of choose between one of those three, the Backpacker, the Road Trip, the Globetrotter, based on load capacity and height of the, the maximum height of the tripod. So depending on which one of those is important to you, that's sort of gonna slot you into which one of the three models you wanna choose. The Backpacker is only available in aluminum. They do not make a carbon fiber. It's small enough in and of itself that there's just not a huge weight savings advantage to what it would cost them to do so. But the Road Trip and the Globe Trotter are both available in carbon fiber models. We can shave a little bit of weight off. Uh, I went with aluminum when I got it. It was uh, very well priced at the time. So the Mi Photo tripods come with the ball head already with it, which is sort of nice if you're looking for an all-in-one package at a reasonable price. Like I said, this retails for around 220 includes the legs and the ball head, which is a pretty nice setup. And when I was looking for a travel tripod, when I purchased this several years ago, that was very attractive. I just sort of wanted a full complete setup that I could travel with and not spend a whole lot of money. And that's what this fit in. And when I received it, it's surprisingly durable. It feels solid in hand. Um, I've used this and traveled with it for uh, probably two or three years now, maybe more. And it's still in pretty good shape. You know, it, it's a good solid tripod. It still sees use today. So this Mi Photo Globe Trotter is the aluminum version. You can go up to about 64 inches high, and that is with the ball head on here, so that's how it gets a little bit of extra height compared to some tripods, because it's calculating in with the ball head. The minimum height is around 16 inches when you spread the legs out. That's because the center column down here can get in the way of just how low it can go compared to, you know, tripods without center columns. The weight of the tripod and ball head is 4.6 pounds. It has a load capacity of around 26 pounds. And the folded length of this tripod is around 16 inches because the legs can fold up like this, which help really reduce how much space it takes when you flip them all up. Makes it very handy for traveling, which is why to me, this is a, a good travel tripod. And tripod does use twist locks and it is a five section tripod, five sections to its legs with one, two, three, four, five. Super easy, you can undo all of them at once. Awesome, one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, five section tripod. Twist locks, in my opinion, makes things so easy. I much prefer them these days to the flip locks, the tripods I've used to use in the past. So uh, twist locks is a great thing. And since this tripod comes with a ball head, let's take a quick peek at the uh, ball head. It is a pretty decent ball head, in my opinion. Like I said, 26 pounds, and you do have to remember that when you start torquing big lenses over it, you're getting some torque. So just because your camera and lens might not weigh 26 pounds, as you start to hang a lens over, it provides torque, which the physics of it's gonna put more weight on it because of that levering. So just something to keep in mind uh, when you're considering ball head ratings, capacity ratings, and things like that. But anyways, this particular one's pretty nice. It uses an Arca Swiss mount, which I like. I think that's a good thing. It's so universal, it works with all sorts of different things, it makes it easy to put an L camera with an L bracket on it, everything like that. It does have a level in it right there at the top, just to help you level your camera if you wanna watch that. It does have a pan dial to control your pan. So once you get everything locked in, if you need to pan over, it's got a dial that allows you to rotate try the head like that. It has a ball head tensioner right here to adjust the tension on your ball head, as well as your major adjustment for the ball ball head. So yeah, it's got all the basic features that you would want in a ball head. You know, I think for an included ball head, it's uh, a, a great choice. Like I said, when I did purchase this tripod, one of the things I wanted was all in one. And so that was a deciding factor for me at the time. I might make different decisions now because I'm more picky about ball heads and things like that. But when I picked this up, the fact it was all in one was, was a, a good thing to me. Uh, center column raises and lowers, nice little, you know, similar to the twist locks, 
raise lower, super easy for those micro adjustments in height. I obviously get a little bit of instability from a center column. Um, like I said, future video on tripods with center columns and without center columns. And then finally, the leg mechanism is right here. You have to pull out. So you have to take a little bit of the tension off, pull out, that lets the leg come up, and you can lock it into place, lock it into the next place. And then, like I said, for travel, you can fold it completely up like this and you fold all three up and that helps it fit into a nice small pack. That actually is one of the huge advantages of this because I still fly with this tripod, uh, especially for the video piece of things. So that being able to fold it up feature is really important to me because it gets it down to such a small package. When I fly with this, because it's aluminum, relatively sturdy, what I usually do is get it all packed up nice and small, sneak it into my daughter's uh, checked luggage and to hers and it flies, it makes it there. I've done that several times and never had a problem flying with it that way. So super cool on that. And then one other little thing, if you're out somewhere and you just happen to need a monopod, one of the cool things with the Mi Photos, this is a foam gripped leg. And if you turn it, this actually detaches from the tripod like this. You unscrew this from the bottom of the center column, pop this out, screw this together. The ball head is still attached and you have a nice little monopod. So that can be super handy if you're traveling and you're gonna be going someplace where you can't set up a full tripod or something like that. You can, essentially with this, you're bringing a tripod and a monopod. So super cool feature. I actually use this monopod a fair amount, uh, not just for landscape photography, but for other things where a monopod is just handy. So yeah, super cool. I do think that's a, a cool feature. Like I said, if you're traveling, it's sort of nice to have that, that multiple piece. Okay, and finally, it does have a bag hanger on the bottom. Uh, what this is for is if, you, because it's a travel tripod, it's not as necessarily by definition as rugged or sturdy as like a full on non-travel tripod that has more robustness built into it. So it's got this little thing for bag hanger. I think for a travel tripod, that's a pretty cool feature because it'll help you pay off that con to it by being able to put a little bit of weight on it to help keep it stable. So pretty cool feature there as well. Doesn't get down to the lowest, but let's take a real quick second, pop it up. It's full extension, just so you can see what it looks like compared to me. Doesn't do too bad. Like I said, with the center column, you can get it up even higher. Uh, twist locks, like I said, see how fast that is? The twist locks, you can just... So here it is with the center column all the way down. I am about 5'11", so it sits up right here. That's a pretty good height, even with the center column down. If you need more height, you can get all the way up here. You know, that's a pretty good height. I mean, again, I'm 5'11", so that would put it definitely up here uh, pretty well. Again, you're pretty well extended. You know, it's not too unstable within that configuration. So yeah, so you can get a lot of height out of this guy. Um, pretty versatile tripod. Okay, and the tripod comes with the rubber feet, but they can be removed and you can put spike feet on it. Uh, the original package did come with a spiked feet. I don't use spiked feet a whole lot, but they are, they are available uh, and do come with the package if you want them. Okay, so why did I choose to go with this tripod? Like I said, I've had this for several years and there were a couple factors that went into it. First, at the time, I was looking specifically for a travel tripod. I had some upcoming trips coming up. I wanted something that was sturdy as far as travel-wise to be able to stick in a bag somewhere and travel with. I sort of wanted an all-in-one unit because I didn't want to spend a bunch of money. I was still in my uh, frugal days of uh, camera equipment and photography equipment, and so I didn't want to spend a ton of money. Uh, like I said, these do go on sale relatively frequently, especially in the holiday time frame. So I was able to get this for a good price all in one bundle, worked out really well from that standpoint. And those were some of my important qualities to it, was does it travel well? Which to me meant, does it fold up small? Because I wanted to be able to get something small. I wasn't quite as weight concerned then, because it was gonna be my only tripod uh, that I was gonna be carrying. So I wasn't super concerned with weight, so I didn't pay super close attention. Like I said, this is 4.6 pounds with the legs and the head, which I think is a little heavy by today's standards. But at the time, and if you're only going with one tripod, I don't think it's that bad. Um, so at the time, this hit all the bells. It was all in one. It was affordable, especially on sale, and it packed up pretty small. A little bit of a con to the weight. At the time, I didn't really care. So that's how I came about with this tripod. So my thoughts after having used this tripod for quite some time is it's actually a really good tripod. It fits exactly what I was looking for at the time. I still actually regularly use this because it's just a convenient, durable package and it hits all the right buttons and keeps me from needing to buy anything else. Like I said, back in the day when it was more of my main travel tripod, I would use DSLRs on it. I'd 
you know, with 70 to 200 lenses and it worked out okay. I used mirrorless cameras on this, no problems. This is actually the tripod I tend to use with my uh, Micro Four Third setup my, that I talked about on my compact camera for landscape photography video. This is the tripod I tend to take because it folds up so small. Super cool on that standpoint. So yeah, it's a good tripod. It's been durable. It still works great with the YouTube video and the vloggings I'm doing now. This tripod goes with me on every trip. This is the one that my video camera goes on when you see me out in the field. This is what my video camera is mounted to is this. Just a simple, convenient tripod. It still works. No problems at all with it. So if you're newer to landscape photography and just looking for a quick, I need to get out the door, get set up. I don't want to spend a ton of time researching, but I want something that's going to last. I think this is still worth looking at. If you find them on sale, super reasonably costs, gives you a good little tripod setup. It, it's still not a bad way to go. Like I said, mine still sees regular use as a vlogging tripod. So it's with me on almost every trip that you see to be there for my camera I use to record video with. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this purchase. It served me well. I think it was a good decision back then. Um, like I said, technology is advancing. So, you know, things shift, it, you know, it's worth keeping an eye on. I think if you can find one on sale, B&H puts some of the road trips on sale for crazy low dollars. Uh, I wanna say I've seen them as low as like 70 bucks. They're slightly shorter than this, not quite the load capacity. The globe trotters will go on sale sometimes too, especially the aluminum versions. It's probably worth picking up if you're in the market for a travel tripod. The cost to durability to it ratio is pretty darn good. You know, there are better setups out there. Technology advances, carbon fibers come down in price, everything like that. When you find one of these on sale, it's really not a bad way to go. I've been happy with it. And like I said, this still sees regular use for me on a almost every trip, especially as my tripod I use for my camera I use to record video with. So great setup. So if you found this video useful, I'd love it if you hit that like button. And if you wanna see future content from me, including gear reviews, behind the scenes of landscape photography, just my general thoughts on landscape photography, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any future content from me. And I really appreciate you watching. Thank you. Mm -hmm.